Howdy folks. In this video I'm going to give you a breakdown of my bow mounted camera setup. I've had a lot of people ask me over the years how do you mount a camera on your bow and what do you use? So I thought the best way to do this was just go ahead and make a video of it and try to give you a quick breakdown of what I use now. As you can see, I've used a lot of different bows, a lot of different camera mounts, a lot of different cameras over the years. And right now, this is what I'm using, and it seems to work best for me. Now, if you're into self-filming and this is something you want to try, this is not the only option. Your imagination is the limits of, of what you can do. So, if you're interested in self-filming and you want to see what I do, then stick around I'm fixing to give you a quick breakdown of it thank you right now at the present day I'm shooting a Matthews Haley I use a whisker biscuit for an air rest I love it I got an old Cobra style three pin sight what you're looking at on the left is a homemade quickie quiver bracket you can see my sight's got a little wear and tear on it and I like to put a hook on my quiver because I take it off the bow and hang it. I use uh, limb saver, uh, silencers and monkey tails seem to work pretty good. I have an oversized peep because I wear progressive bifocals and it helps me be able to see the target. I always keep both eyes open. Now this is my camera mount right here. It's a Z bracket. I got the bolt all taped up because it's shiny, but there's a bolt that goes through the riser. It's a Z bracket, it's what I call it. Comes out, makes a 90, and then makes another 90. And then I weld another 90 degree bracket onto the side of it, leveling it up across the top of my Doinker stabilizer. Now my stabilizer has a little bit of wear and tear on it, but don't pay no attention to that. Here's a better view of the bracket from one side. This is the other side. And it comes off the riser. One bolt goes through the riser holding it. And then it goes through the stabilizer. That's a double uh, secure mechanism. Now the bolts on the bottom of that 90 degree bracket holds my quick release on from Manfrotto is the brand name I use for quick release. And I weld it up. I tack weld one side of it first. And I get it all adjusted exactly the way I want it before I make the final solid weld on there. Here's some more views of it. And just, I don't know if these pictures are happy, but I'm trying to throw as many pictures as I can in there. Once I put the mountain bracket on my camera, it simply slides right into that quick release and it makes for a pretty good easy setup on off real quick you just turn a little lever to lock it in place you can adjust it where you want and that's what it looks like sitting on the bow this is my little homemade drawing I hope this will help if you want to pause it on that I still use a trigger release true fire it's got a little wear and tear on it I'm a old school by a long shot I still use the XX75 camo Hunter 2219 Eastern Arrows. I figure if it ain't broke, don't fix it. It's a 29 and a quarter inch arrow. Uh, 29 and a half, you measure it from the knock. A little bit of probably hand oil on that old. I still use the wooden grip. I just relax my wrist on it, let my fingers kind of relax on it, let it sit in there. I do not open my hand up when I shoot a bow, that torques it. I do a, a D-loop, as you can see, and I still use the old peep sights with the rubber on it. And I leave a little slack in that rubber because I don't want the thing to pop, hit me in the eye. This is the camera that I use. I have actually two of these cameras. One I can set on my Lone Wolf tree arm that I have, and then it's just, I guess, example of how it sets in there once it's in there. And then the other one I mount on my bow, so I have, sometimes I'll have two camera angles. If I know where the deer's coming from, I'll take the tree arm. If I don't, and I'm hunting on the fly, it's just a bow-mounted camera for me. I don't fool with carrying all that other stuff in the woods with me. 
seems to work pretty good for me. Got a little camo on it. I need to, I just noticed that I need to either color that ring there because the reflection of that camera has actually cost me a deer or two. It'll get their attention when the sun hits it just right. One good thing about a Matthews, they're easy to tune. You set the time and mark in the center on the bottom cam, you line up your center shot, you set your knock on to 90, and the last thing you might have to do is shim your top cam. Other than that, it's pretty simple. Now, I would highly suggest you learn how to tune a bow properly. That's very important. Now, I talked about adjusting that bracket before you weld it solid, and here's what I'm talking about. When you set it on your bow, you got your camera mounted on there, you put it on wide angle, you can see the arrow in the center. That's one step. Now, as you zoom in, you want that camera to basically follow right where you're zooming. So, that's the ideal behind getting everything adjusted just right. So you want the center of that camera, literally, I mean, it looks like it's a lot higher, but if you're looking at your arrow, you literally look right straight down there and point it exactly where you want it. I use a little old bitty clamp and uh, something soft to clamp my bottom limb onto the deck of a porch or something like that. I'll clamp it down, I'll point that arrow first exactly where I want the camera to aim and then when I zoom in on it, that's exactly where it's going to be aiming once it's completely zoomed in. That's your adjustment. You got to really pay attention to that because you're out there in the woods, a lot of times you're just pointing the arrow at the deer, you're not looking at the viewfinder on the camera. And that helps you get the deer on film a lot better. I mean, it's just some things to think about. I hope this helps. Now, y'all get out there and film your deer now.